are responsible for the care of important and expensive equipment. You want to keep that equipment running well for a very long time. Your company works with Analysts Incorporated in an ongoing program to monitor the performance of the lubricant or other fluids used in the equipment and to detect contamination or early signs of excessive equipment wear. This analysis program detects the beginning of a problem before it becomes severe, letting you fix the cause and avoid an expensive shutdown and repair. Your part in this valuable service is to take a sample of the fluid, label the sample, and fill out necessary paperwork and send it all to the laboratory. You may also be expected to review the analysis report and respond to its recommendations. There are five steps in this sampling, analysis, and reporting process. We'll go over them one by one. The first step is collecting the sample. The usefulness of the analysis will depend on thoughtful, consistent, and careful sampling. If it can be done safely, take the sample while the system is running, or within 15 minutes after shutdown. If it is at all possible, do not take the sample from the bottom of the oil pan or tank. These practices ensure that the sample represents the lubricant as it is working, not after contaminants and wear particles have settled out. You may use any one of four methods of sampling. Sampling accessories are available for each method. The best and recommended method is sampling through a QSS valve. If the tank or oil pan does not have a QSS valve, petcock, or similar sampling device, you may obtain a QSS valve through Analysts Incorporated. The valve is easy to install. To take a sample through the QSS valve, press one end of the tubing onto the valve stem, then press in the stem to open the valve. The valve closes when you release the stem. Bellows sampling uses a single-use sampling kit consisting of a bellows pump and tubing. The length of the tubing inserted into the reservoir should not exceed the length of the dipstick. This avoids drawing the sample from the bottom of the reservoir. Compress the bellows and release it to fill the bellows at least half full. Using a vacuum gun, place the tubing in the same manner as for the bellows. Draw the sample to fill the container at least three quarters full. The fourth sampling method, and the least desirable, is sampling at the tank or oil pan drain. Before sampling at the drain, carefully clean the area around the drain plug. Take the sample after about one-third of the oil capacity has been drained. Now comes the paperwork. If the sample source is already registered at the laboratory, fill out the sample processing form for the sample. On the first sample from any component, fill out every item on the form. The laboratory may not be able to accurately evaluate the sample if any item has been omitted. To repeat, it is very important that you fill out every item on the form. After the first sample from that component has been submitted, you only need to complete the section which records changing information. It is vitally important that you note in the comments box any mechanical work or operating problems with the equipment being sampled. This information feedback will affect our evaluation. Separate the two parts of the form. Send the white part along with the sample and file the yellow part in your maintenance files. Some programs use a Form 50 identification sheet instead of the sample processing form. Whichever you use, be sure to fill these out completely. The next step is easy. Just fill out all the information requested on the sample label. Again, the analyst needs all the information. Promptly send the sample to the laboratory using first class mail, UPS, FedEx, or other reliable commercial delivery service. 
Do not set the sample aside to send later for any reason. Should the sample contain clues to a problem, you want to know as soon as possible. Your equipment may depend upon it. The laboratory performs a number of chemical and physical tests determined by the type of equipment, its application, and your company's program objectives. If sample analysis indicates a critical problem with your equipment, our analyst will immediately call and discuss it with you, making recommendations and referring to detailed information that will appear in the laboratory report. The last item in the process is the laboratory report. This report tells you what's happening inside your equipment and what may be done about any developing problem. At the upper right on the report is the equipment status indicated by the analysis. This may be normal, abnormal, or critical. Below the status line are shown the unit ID, equipment component, and the component reference number. If you call about the sample or the report, always refer to the unit ID and the component reference number. At the laboratory, the component reference number links together the sample, equipment, and its analysis, helping you get the information you need. The maintenance recommendations area is the heart of the report. This concisely tells you what was learned in the analysis and suggests action to correct any problem revealed in the analysis. The upper part of the tabular data shows the amount, in parts per million, of different metallics found in the sample. Results from successive analysis appear on consecutive lines, that is, the first analysis from the particular sample source is on top, and the last is on the bottom. A line below a test result marks a particularly significant measurement or trend that may suggest investigation and possible maintenance action. The lower part of the data section shows results of several physical tests. The reverse side of the report explains the significance and possible source of each condition or element measured. For example, an increasing total acid number may indicate oil oxidation or contamination with an acidic product. You are encouraged to call the laboratory to ask questions about your samples, reply to our questions, or get additional information about a report. Now we've covered the entire sampling, analysis, and reporting process. Let's review the steps. Collect the sample. Fill out the sample processing form and sample label. Send the sample to the laboratory without delay. The laboratory performs the analysis and informs you of significant results, recommending specific corrective maintenance action. Communication between the laboratory and your maintenance department is the key to a productive analysis program. Finally, you study the analysis report and initiate any suggested maintenance action. Be sure to call the laboratory if you have any questions about the report. Note, you can save valuable time by downloading analysis reports from analysts' website on the Internet. This reduces paperwork and postal delays. This analysis program makes your job a lot easier and keeps your equipment running better and longer without failures and consequent downtime.